today's video, we're going to be working on my A-frame shelter right here, as you can see behind me. And it's half done. We got this tarp on the left side of it. And then I bought myself uh, a way bigger tarp, so I'm going to put that on the right side of the shelter where it's not as a shelter. So stay tuned, and I hope you guys will enjoy. Alrighty. So when I first started doing the shelter, um, we got uh, the one side that has whole lots of brick poles leaning on against this main pole right here. And I got a whole lot of them right here too, so I'm going to uh, chase them all out so we can put the other side of the shelter. So here it is. Um, I'm going to grab a, at least three more uh, brick poles so I can put against the main pole on the top. And this way, the show, um, the tarp when it rains or snows, it won't sag under as well. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna collect some uh, brick poles right here. Here's my knife. So I'll be right back. Still gonna be really good for rich pull. I'm gonna use my Gerber full tank 56 inch blade knife. It's my favorite bushcraft knife that I've ever owned. So, and I'm gonna put it through a test so that the top nut uh, to the top right here that I put the uh, pull on our shelter. up right here in it won't uh, punch into our shelter so let's get that done as we go so this is the tree that we just cut in half with our our knife go ahead and press it and get it right there we go okay so you can see these nuts here you just run your knife along the tree it up like so and this will reduce your chances of holes being poked into your tarp or whatever shelter that or whatever thing you're using to make the shelter with this is kind of fragile with tarp so I'm gonna get rid of these nuts here Really good. Now let's put it on the uh, brick poles, and um, yeah, let's get probably two more, and then we'll be done for that. Okay, we got three good pieces. So this, the first one that this is the one that we cut down with the uh, knife, and one good tip that I can you guys when you're building A-frame shelters like this if you ever are um, so there will be always the thicker part of the tree and the thinner part of the tree so you want to reduce as much weight as you can from the top pole because then that sometimes can make it collapse so you put the thinner side of the uh, tree or uh, stick that you're using so you put the base on the floor and then you lean it against the, the rich pole so a nice gap right here where I can put this here. Pretty good. Another one. Yeah. Let's get this done. And then put another one. There. There we go. Now these pieces here. There's this nice big piece, so I'm going to put on the back of the shelter, because that'll be like a wall. So I'll lean it against the wall, make uh, more of a shelter, and then we'll have a windbreak there, too. So yeah, so 
can do in the next episode where you are going to put the whole lack of bees against the this wall here so it actually makes a shelter but now it's time for my favorite part of building a shelter here's my favorite part of building the uh, shelter in these weird parts when this really gets come together so here's a big tarp that I got it's really big so it'll probably cover most of that side as well too so that'll create more of a shelter too so yeah let's get this up on there Looking good. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put it on top of the shelter more, and then I'll show you guys the inside what it looks like. Alrighty, everybody, we got the uh, basically the entire shelter almost done. We got all the tarp uh, all put up. So grabbing the stick, just the end of it. I'm just pushing these leaves. Nothing. It's not rocket science. It's just simple work. To rake it all up. Alrighty. So this is the first tarp that I put onto this shelter. Which is really nice. It has held up all winter, and um, you can see this for quite a distance. So when it camouflages more, and also to use more or to utilize more of the uh, leaves and the crap that was inside of the shelter. I just grab a whole bunch of these leaves and stuff. Throw it on top. Just gonna keep doing that and then yeah. It'll look pretty cool, cool at the end and it will keep uh, weight on it too. Which will allow it to just sit there while then it just keep wagging and stuff. There we go. Okay. So there's not much I put on there, that was because this is all that was just in the uh, shelter, but uh, it is coming along though. So uh, sooner or later, probably towards the fall time, when this all of the leaves have fall, I'll be able to put all leaves on top of the whole thing. So that looks really good. And yeah, Let's see what else we can do. Not too big right now, but <clears throat> yeah, that feels nice. Cool, cool. <clears throat> so yeah, what we'll do? I'll go try looking for pieces, just as long as these, and then just spreading them out. So yeah, and then what well, my goal is too is if I can maybe get some more of these moss pieces here, because this one's dry as a bone. I've let I've uh, had this piece for what since I actually started building this place, so I can just lay that on. That'll be a nice cushion. Um, but another thing you can use is uh, spruce boughs or um, from pine trees or uh, spruce trees. You can use the the sprucey parts, uh, which is called pine boughs. You can cut them off and then you can lay them out down on a bed, or whatever. It'll be nice and springy and it can. T uh, keep you off the ground which will allow you to you know be more dry and more comfortable which is very important in the survival situation so yeah this is really turning out to be uh, more of a actual permanent shelter finally so yeah getting getting this bed now built and I do have this piece I might just uh, carve these off just so as I'm sleeping they don't just keep falling on me so yeah this will be really nice I can't 
And I can't wait to actually do some overnighters here during the summer. Ha, I got the mosquito. So yeah, let's get that done and then yeah, we'll see what else we can do. Uh, I have all day today to do, so stay tuned. Alrighty, so we got a peg here that I've just made, that I've just made here, and this will be used to support the bed, because you can see it's, it's wobbly, and just because it's laying, or um, just laying on one log right here, so I'm just going to make some pegs, and one thing that happens a lot when you're making pegs if you just make it straight and it'll um, kind of just split the wood out. I have some, a few examples here that I'll take a picture of and I'll show you but that's what happens when you just constantly bang it with like a piece of wood or hammer or the back of an axe or something. That's what usually happens. So I have a nice tip that I can show. This peg here, as you can see, I've rounded the top. So when the peg is getting hitting it, it's not going to hit the edges too much, which is going to make it splay out and it's going to be making it weak. So what you do, you just shave off the edges and make it almost into a point, but not quite, just make it nice and flat on the top, like so, which makes it nice and <clears throat> soft, like so. And then we'll come over here, tripod over here, and then... You can see over here, taking my pounding stick, which is right here. This is our peg. I'll just sharpen the tip up a little bit more, like so. Well, there we go, nice and sharp. And then what I do, I like to come from the inside because the thing would be hitting a wall, so that's already of a, a support. So hitting the wall right here, or hitting this uh, thing, or this uh, piece that's holding a raised bed. So what I do, is put, pound that in a bit. I'm just going to cut these pieces off. There we go. Didn't need a knife, but there we go. And then just hammer that in. There we go. Now as you can see, it's pretty stayed stable there. Now it's not allowing the log to roll this way. And I have another one here, which I'm gonna put on this side as well. And then I have two more that I'm gonna put on that side. So get some nice shots of those getting done. Okay, so we have now finished the uh, bedding. Now I'm gonna put some moss onto it and there's this uh, nice poplar tree and you can see it's been growing this nice fluffy moss. It's like really, really um, cushiony I would say. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna cut around it with a knife. It's kind of work it just so it kind of just falls right off of the bark of this tree like so there we go that's a nice piece of moss these are it's really really comfy when you're sleeping on it that's for sure 
there we go. Now we got some pieces. So we're gonna repeat this like a whole whack of times and then uh, see how much moss we get and hopefully it'll fill up the bed. Whew. Alrighty guys, yeah. That is a lot of work. But it'll be all worth it at the end. So what we got here, we got a whole whack of moss. Uh, definitely not enough for to make the entire bed, but it'll be good enough for now. Just because I'm going to head home now. I'm really thirsty. I forgot to bring water, which is <laughs> really, really dumb. But, uh, yeah. Let's see what we can do with this bed here. Put the camera more to the bed. There we go. And then, just going to put that on. Like so. <clears throat> Looks really nice already, bro. Well. Okay, let's see what it feels like. Oh, wow. So much better. Oh, I could literally sleep on here right now. This feels so nice. Wow. Really nice. That is really nice. Cool, cool. Well, anyways, we got... The uh, tarp, we got uh, some more ridge poles, got the bed made, got moss, got uh, some walling done too, got lots of good stuff done. Well, anyways, I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. I had an amazing time out here building up on the shelter. I'm going to do more shelter videos, more bushcraft videos and survival, all that good stuff. So yeah, if you want to see more of those, uh, like the video, subscribe for more, and send a comment down below. So, if you guys enjoyed, thank everybody for watching, and uh, stay tuned to next time. See you guys on the next one. Bye.